In mid-3rd century, their Taoist beliefs were very much at odds with the rigid strictures of Confucian etiquette that prevailed at court. So, what was their secret to surviving the potentially deadly political intrigues? The story of the Seven Sages of the Bamboo Grove continues. According to the history of the Jin dynasty, when he saw Ruanji return from Dongping, Sima Zhao was delighted, and he made Ruanji his secretary again. Ruanji had returned to the capital after serving only briefly as governor of Dongping. Now, he made another request to Sima Zhao, who was the de facto ruler of Cao Wei. He wanted to join the army as an infantry officer. The history of the Jin dynasty comments, Ruanji had learned that the infantry were supplied with large quantities of good wine. That is why he wanted to serve as an infantry officer. However, some scholars believe that the wine wasn't the only thing that attracted Ruanji to the infantry. Ruanji was a military officer, in the mid-third century, an infantry officer had no real power. Ruanji saw serving in the army as a way of keeping his distance from the Sima family and not being perceived by them as a threat. So it's fair to say that he joined the army out of political expediency. In the army, Ruanji was able to drink all the good wine he wanted. He even asked Liao Ling, another of the seven sages of the bamboo grove and a noted drinker, to join him. Wamanya 曹魏皇室大势已去History of the Jin Dynasty states that Ruanji did have a desire to serve his country. However, few scholars survived the political infighting of the time. Ruanji turned to drink as a means of survival. Ruanji's grandfather and father had both served as officials under the warlord Cao Cao. Ruanji, who had a strong sense of justice, resented Sima Yi and his sons for usurping power. With time, 
his loyalties came to rest squarely with the Tsao family. And so Ruanji found himself in a perilous situation. Determined to remain honest and upright, he had to hide his true feelings. As a result, he found it very difficult to perform his official duties. The Sima family's influence at court was unrivaled following the Gaoping mausoleum coup. Although the Tsao family remained rulers in name, real power rested with the Sima family. As a way of consolidating their position, the Sima family championed Confucianism. They stated that the country would be run based on the principle of filial piety. However, this created confusion since the accepted interpretation of filial piety was that it dealt with respect for one's parents, ancestors and elders, and not for the monarch. The Sima family saw filial piety as the key to persuading people to honour their new rulers and abandon their loyalty to the Cao family. There were many ways of demonstrating filial piety. Following the death of his parents, for example, a son was expected to mourn, not eat meat, and pay his respects at the tomb for three years. In the year 256, Ruanji's mother died. When he received the news of his mother's death, he was playing chess. His opponent immediately suggested they stop their game. But Ruanji said, no, you must go to the king. After the death of Ruanji, Ruanji was in the two doors, and went to his mother's side, and cried out loud, and cried out loud. It was very, very difficult. The history of the Jin dynasty describes how, before his mother's funeral, Ruanji drank heavily and feasted on a piglet. At the funeral, he cried in anguish and vomited large amounts of blood again. Before the burial procession set out, an official by the name of Pei Kai came to express his condolences. According to the rules of etiquette, Ruanji, as a filial son, should have wept together with Pei Kai. However, Ruanji sat on his bed, his hair dishevelled and his legs crossed, not saying a word. Pei Kai, in accordance with etiquette, wept for the death of Ruanji's mother. The history of the Jin dynasty says that afterwards someone said to Pei Kai, it's a rule that a person offering condolences should not weep unless the host does. Ruanji didn't weep, so why did you? Pei Kai's reply was, Ruanji is not part of our society, so he can ignore our rules of etiquette. I believe in these rules, so I must observe them. In the mid-third century, society was riddled with different rules of etiquette, dictating what people thought and did. People outside society, however, could be unconventional and unconstrained. They were not subject to observing the normal rules of etiquette. Some scholars hold that in the way he mourned his mother, Ruanji showed that he believed what mattered was how he felt in his heart. 
他显然认为，如果内心充满敬意，那么为什么还需要外在形式上的谦逊的套语？如果内心充满哀思，那么为什么还需要按照礼仪的样式安排哭声呢？在阮籍上任自然、不拘礼节的背后，隐含着的是活佛理智的精神。It's said of Ruanji that he changed the colour of his eyes as a way of showing his feelings. He showed the blacks of his eyes to people he liked, and the whites to those he hated. After the death of Ruanji's mother, Ji Shi, the brother of Ji Kang, who was another of the seven sages of the bamboo grove, came to express his condolences. Ji Shi was an official and someone whom Ruanji viewed as a follower of Confucian etiquette. So, Ruanji showed him the whites of his eyes. But when Ji Kang came in person to express his condolences, bringing wine with him, Ruanji welcomed him warmly with black eyes. Ruanji's failure to observe the proper rules of etiquette at the time of his mother's death created resentment among those who were in favour of the rules. Not long after his mother's funeral, Ruanji was invited to a banquet hosted by Sima Zhao. In the banquet, the Sima Zhao was invited to a banquet hosted by Sima Zhao. In the banquet, the Sima Zhao was invited to a banquet hosted by Sima Zhao. In the banquet, the Sima Zhao 以明教治天下，像你这样的人是不可以助长的。Ruanji simply ignored Hu Zeng and went on eating meat and drinking wine. Affronted, Hu Zeng turned to Sima Zhao for help. Hu Zeng said, "Ruanji, though he is in mourning for his mother, is eating meat and drinking wine here." He should be exiled to a remote area, so that he can no longer tarnish the country's image. But Sima Zhao was an admirer of Ruanji, and he silenced her zeng by saying, "He is weak because of illness. Can you not be more tolerant for my sake?" Also, some people are thinking that Hu Zeng may have received a warning from Sima Zhao, and he publicly attacked Ruanji. Sima Zhao, then. 这佯装好人，给予保护，以获得呀、啊、阮籍的感激，使他呀、啊、甘心为司马氏效劳。同时啊，还可以奏戏给天下的名士们看，我司马昭是多么的宽容，多么的爱惜人才。In fact, Hu Zeng criticized Ruanji in the presence of Sima Zhao on many occasions. According to History of the Jin Dynasty, Hu Zeng complained that Ruanji, despite referring to himself merely as a gentleman, led a life of luxury, was extravagant, dressed in gorgeous attire, and ate better food than the emperor. Hu Zeng added that Ruanji, even though he spent lavishly on food, still complained that he had nothing good to eat. So why was Sima Zhao so tolerant of Ruanji? Were there other reasons? Apart from his desire to show people that he valued scholars, Ruanji restricted his unconventional behaviour to his personal life. Although he violated Confucian etiquette and the Sima family's call to observe filial piety, he didn't comment on political issues, and he refrained from criticising the country's political leaders. So he presented no real threat. To the power of the Sima family, this was undoubtedly a factor in the Sima family's tolerance and their desire to defend him. A year after Ruanji's mother died, Wang Rong, another of the seven sages of the bamboo grove, was appointed to the post of governor by Sima Zhao. He was. 24. 此后，王荣又担任了三级常侍、荆州刺史、
御肉刺史、吏部尚书、太子太太子太傅，最后官至司徒、未及三公之列。在竹林七仙中，他和三涛都是官至最高的。Wang Rong Tu was aware that as a high official in dangerous times, he was in a perilous position. The history of the Jin Dynasty describes him as maintaining a distance from the political infighting in order to protect himself. Wang Rong's example was followed by the other sages of the Bamboo Grove. All seven saw keeping a low profile as the best way of staying safe amid the political upheavals of the time. According to historical records, Wang Rong left the handling of the day-to-day -day affairs of his post to his subordinates. Meanwhile, he himself would take his horse and, dressed in ordinary clothes, go on excursions. 见到他的人都不知道他是朝中的一位权贵。其实，王荣奉行的是儒道合一的原则。那么，他的人格也就会呈现出一儒一道。The history of the Jin Dynasty relates that Wang Rong's mother died when he was governor of Yuzhou. His subsequent behaviour was surprisingly similar to that of Ruanji after his mother died. In his grief, Wang Rong also vomited blood. He became so emaciated that he had to support himself with a walking stick. And also, like Ruanji, he continued to eat meat and drink wine, even when he was in mourning. He also passed his time watching games of chess. It's been said that Wang Rong was merely imitating Ruanji. Ideologically, Wang Rong aspired to integrating a love of nature with Confucian etiquette. His refusal to behave in accordance with the prevailing rules of etiquette following his mother's death was evidence of his love of nature. On the other hand, his clear expressions of grief showed that he was filial and observed Confucian etiquette. Out of all the other sages of the bamboo grove, Wang Rong admired Shan Tao the most. According to Shi Shuo Xinyu, or New Account of Tales of the World, Wang Rong said of Shan Tao, "He is just like a gemstone or a mineral which, left unrefined, does not reveal its true worth." Shan Tao, while drinking and discussing non-political issues with his friends in the bamboo grove, would often turn his eyes skyward and gaze at the clouds above the mountain. The story goes that when he was just 17, Shan Tao was praised in the presence of Sima Yi by a member of the Shan family. But Sima Yi was sceptical. The Shan clan is small, he argued, so how could it produce someone so outstanding? It wasn't until Shan Tao was 40 that he was appointed to an official position. Even then, Shan Tao was only appointed as a minor local government official. Later on, he was given a more senior position in Henan. But the struggle between the Sima and Cao family factions was intensifying. Unsure of which side would prevail, Shan Tao gave up his official position and sought refuge in the bamboo grove. With the political situation more clear following the Gaoping Mausoleum coup, 
Chantal left the bamboo grove and offered his services to the Sima family. He was warmly received by Sima'i's eldest son, Sima Shu, who commented, So, you want to become an official, just like Lu Wang. Lu Wang lived in the final years of the Shang dynasty. He's famous for biding his time fishing in the Wei Shui River using a line with no bait and no hook. It wasn't until he was 80 that King Wen of Zhou discovered him and appointed him to an official position. Shan Tao worked hard in his official post and won the trust of the Sima family. In 264, Sima Zhao led his army to put down a rebellion in the west. At the time, the descendants of Cao Cao were still living in the city of Yecheng. Sima Zhao, fearing that they would take advantage of his absence and create trouble, left Shan Tao in charge of the city with a force of 500 men. Before his departure, Sima Zhao said to Shan Tao, What happens in my west is my responsibility. I leave it as your responsibility to take care of my rear. When Sima Zhao returned from his western expedition, he found the city safe. This increased his confidence in Shan Tao. For 10 years, Shan Tao held the key position of gentleman at court. Among his responsibilities was selecting candidates for official positions. When an official position became available, Shan Tao would always recommend the best candidates to the emperor. He would accompany his recommendations with notes on the candidates, which became known as Mr. Shan's comments. Shan Tao was often offered bribes by people seeking promotion. However, being honest and incorruptible, Shan Tao refused all these bribes. But he never shouted at or castigated anyone. He just politely declined. Even though Shan Tao joined Ji Kang, Ruan Ji, and the other sages of the bamboo grove in discussing the Taoist philosophy of Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi, at heart, he believed in Confucianism. Filial piety was a key aspect of his character. When he was told that his mother was dying, he immediately asked for leave of absence from his post. When he saw his mother in her hospital bed with her tired face, he wept. He blamed himself and his lack of filial piety for her plight. Chantal stayed at his mother's bedside day and night, feeding her and giving her medicine. He even tasted her food first to see if it was good enough. History of the Jin Dynasty describes how after his mother died, Shan Tao, even though he was in his 60s, helped dig her grave and plant pines and cypresses around it. Shan Tao also built a hut close to the grave where he could stay while he completed his filial duties. His actions were quite different from those of Ruanji and Wang Rong after the deaths of their mothers. Shan Tao realized that the Sima family was vicious and the situation at court perilous. Citing his mother's death, he submitted his resignation. However, his request was rejected. Shan Tao 
Shen Tao came from Wuzhou County in Hunan Province, just 20 kilometers from the bamboo grove where he and his companions met. When he later recalled the times they spent together in the bamboo grove, he would first think of Ji Kang playing the qin. They were both admired and condemned. No one doubted their talents for music and writing. But amid the political turmoil of the mid-third century, their unconventional attitudes were bound to prove dangerous. So they sought a refuge where they could record their radical beliefs in writing. This is the continuing story of the seven sages of the bamboo grove.